Hey everybody, welcome to Hello. Welcome to Sunday Tea Book episode 13. 13. Holy cow, good things are happening here today. We got a great episode coming at you all about water uh -huh. and I think it's a good omen. It's the first time in 13 episodes. Oh. <laughs> that <laughs> Jen is here before 1259. <laughs> so yes, I think that is a good omen. I'm just teasing you. She pointed that out. I didn't notice that until she said it. So I'm not just picking on her. I just wanted to pick on her live. Okay. Good job, okay? I think that's a really good omen. Yes. yes. Hey Josh, good <laughs> afternoon to you too. And uh Hello. Yeah, welcome. Oh, I'm super excited for this episode. I've been waiting for it since last week. Mm. I feel really in the groove. Ever, I just, when Sunday comes now, at first I, okay, I'm going to be a little bit too honest, but I used to dread it. I'm like, oh, I got to go live. Huh? And now I wake up, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to go live. It's water. It's water this week. I get, right? yeah, I get pretty excited about the content. Hey, JS. Hey, JS on YouTube. <laughs> hey there, Bruna Palamora, Palamara. Palamara. Hello there, welcome to the stream. Yes, water, China tea, episode 13. I'm, I'm super those people. excited. I, I really feel like I should be bam, bam, bam in the morning. Because I had five minutes sitting here, I start to <laughs> feel sleepy. Yeah, she was, I did like <laughs> poker when we went live to make sure she was up. Okay, so back to the book. We're continuing the uh, tea book by my mom, Jenny Wu, called mm -hmm. China Tea, which is... Uh, a great book for people who just get into uh, Chinese Excellent. tea um, or those who have been uh, exploring on their own and this book really systematically introduced all the basics yep. uh, of Chinese tea and it lays a great foundation for future exploring oh, and yeah. for us it's good to get a lot of uh, basic uh, like turns and translation between English and Chinese and yep. so that we're on the same page for our future readings. Yeah, that's right. So super excited to dive back in. In general, we started this series as a recommendation from you guys to cover um, books, articles, papers that are written in uh, Chinese, very hard to access, but full of great information. So we, um, and they're either not translated or like China tea, they are translated, but sometimes the translation leaves a little bit to be desired. Mm. So we jump on here, rather than just translate them offline and post them on our blog, we thought, let's translate them live. And you guys encouraged us to say, hey, let's translate them live. And the reason I got so excited about the idea is because as I've been working with Jen over the years, getting all those details behind what different words mean and why they're used and it just gives you a much richer appreciation of where some of the confusion comes from with Chinese tea and just why things are the way they are. So uh, be sure to ask lots of questions, chip in with comments, and um, yeah, that's um, that's a, that's what China that's what Sunday tea read Sunday tea book is all about. <laughs> and um, yeah, cool. And in today's um, session, we're gonna sip some autumn tea guanyin. Mm. Yeah, let me. Uh, we have fancy setup. Yeah, I did a little. <laughs> I did a little pre-roll for you guys, so you can get a really good get in tight yeah. with the leaf. But a little bit here, the lighting on the, uh, the the leaves is a little bit to the red side. I don't have to do. And we'll put it up close for the guys on Instagram. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, that's the gist. So I'm really happy with the teas that you choose. The last time the top grade loves on we. We're talking about that tea even after the session for oh, so yeah. much. I was so happy that we hadn't had that in quite a while. Absolutely. And when I'm setting these up, I always look at the date, and uh, and I was just thinking based on the date, I'm gonna want some autumn take one in. And mm. I'm not kidding. I woke. I totally didn't know the tea when I woke up this morning. I woke up and I'm like, man, I really want some autumn take one in. Yes. Boom. That's the just the time. It. You know, you look outside, yeah. you have the yeah. leaves, and you have that. Uh, warmish sun with a little cool breeze you just want that yeah so totally excited about that tea getting mm -hmm. brewed up so as i mentioned china tea is already translated so the way we're going to roll today and this is especially important for those of you on insta is we're going to throw the book up on the screen on youtube only so instagram folks got to jump over i'll read through a section and point out all the sort of parts that confused me and i'll explain kind of what i got out of them you guys can chime in with what you think some of the words mean and stuff super fun and uh, then jen is going to chime in because she's read the chinese side of the book she'll make sure we didn't miss anything or anything that we misunderstood because the translation wasn't quite there or maybe just because we didn't understand it she'll make sure we're on point 
And most importantly, down in the description below, there is a link to the uh, translation. Um, and it's on our website. So if you guys want to go ahead and pull that up, we actually put it up before the show today. So you mm. guys can actually pull up the, the finished translation and follow along there too, if you wish. Totally optional, of course, but it's, we, we made a little effort to put that up for you guys so you can follow along with the original book and our finished translation on the website. All right, so finally, guys, just before I run, uh, if you're new to the channel, please click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll know whenever we post new videos, when we go live, we have travel vlog, how to brew, uh, interesting facts about tea, all kinds of awesome stuff. And uh, without further ado, we're going to say bye-bye to Instagram and hello to China Tea and get down to some reading. So see you later, Instagram. Can I wipe my nose? See you on nose? YouTube. Can I wipe my nose? Yeah, sure. I think you can do that. If you're a human uh, being, you guys uh, don't mind if she wipes her nose, right? She's a human. Sorry. Can... Here we go. I was yawning for too long, and I just become so watery. I'm not crying. I'm just yawn too much. Sorry. We should fake a cry and fake some drama. We might go viral. Yeah. Right. We won't do that. Don't worry. We're just kidding <laughs> around. That would be awful. Right? Wouldn't it? Maybe it I'm wouldn't. not a, a druggy, just... A, you know, awesome. when you're busy and suddenly get loose, it's like, wow. So a few other folks joined. Uh, Dee's Versified. I, I saw your post on Instagram. Thanks for reaching out to us there. Really love to hear from you. Do you mind? Um, I don't know if I should even ask. I, how do I... Can I can I use your first name, Dee's Versified? That's how I'll ask it. Because now I know it. I, it's on Instagram. And Instagram I just, doesn't necessarily mean it's a real name. Right, but it seemed pretty real. It seemed like a very down-to-earth, great name. So if you're cool with that, but anyway, either way, welcome to the uh, welcome to the live. JS, welcome. Drinking, he's drinking Dan Lu right now. Oh, cool. Uh, uh, last taster I got from your butterfly box from Tea Fest. Oh, awesome. Oh, well, wow. enjoy. That is a great tea. We're having autumn take onion, so I can't tie it in, but I love that one. Mm. It is the, the, what I was going to say about it is it's, we have a black tea made from exactly the same producer, same cultivar and everything. So if you want to like dive, do your own fun taste the process experiment, a Dien Lu Dien Home side by side is really fun. Yeah. A totally different experience. And Johnny Loy, hello and welcome. Awesome. I'm going to get started. Yeah. While you get the tea ready. Uh, so guys, I'm heading over to the book and we will jump in to water. It's going to be awesome. Mm. Oh, I have the book in the middle. I usually start on the cover page, but I was kind of looking at it. So here we are, China Tea. <laughs> Zoom! This and we've made our way through the tea sets uh, last week, and now we're into the water section. So I'm um, super excited about that. It's obviously a very important aspect of tea making, but now we're going to get to see just how important. Okay. So, oh, can I smell it? I'll oh, take yeah, a short break course. to smell that. Give me a little bit more. Invigorating. They probably don't think I need to be woke up, but it still helps me a bit. They're probably You're like, very... If, if he wakes up anymore, he might come through the screen. <laughs> I promise I won't come through the screen. All right, water. Good tea depends on good water. There is a saying that water is the mother of tea. Water give the birth of tea. The ancient people talk about tea. Good tea needs good water. There is a saying from the ancient times that tea depends on water. The better the water is, the better the tea is. Although much better the tea is, the worse the water and the tea turns worse. The tea saint Lu Yu had pointed in his, fur, in his book of tea that water from the spring is the best and then is the water from the river. The last is the water from the well. Emperor Huizom of Song Dynasty in his book Daguan Tea Disputation had supposed that tea should be brewed in the clean and pure water. Su Tsi Shu of Ming Dynasty had said that in his book Cha Shu, the choice tea can just release its mm, fragrance in choice water. Without water, there is no tea. And I'm, I know this section, so I'm laughing a bit. Without water, whatever the tea it is, just as the Qi Tu Huan, Si Tu Hen, and Lute, although the wonderful sounds without the perfect player cannot be heard. Woohoo! All right, let's back up a bit. What are those? Yeah, exactly. You don't know? Nobody knows. 
Okay. okay, so back to the beginning. I think the first paragraph was um, the intro. I should start with the little intro. I'm, it's not even on the screen here. I think that was totally fine. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a little, you know, wa water is the mother of tea. I think we can all kind of get behind that. But mm -hmm. paragraph one, also pretty fine, but the last sentence, mm. although much better the tea is, the worse the water and the tea turns worse. This is a little bit too hard to straighten out. Yes. I found. I was like, so yes. I kind of just tuned it out when I first read it. I'm it like, didn't mm. translate the uh, Chinese version. It's more of a secondary quote. But it, what it was saying is, uh, say, if we read... Uh, a tea and water all from one to ten scales mm. right if the tea is eight scores eight and with a ten squared water then the tea the final tea liquor what we taste the tea would actually come out as a ten nine score oh ten I, yes i thought it might but split if the, the tea like the dry leaf mm. is a ten a scores ten and water scores eight and uh, when they uh, were using that water to make the tea and the tea only scores eight. Okay. So that's uh, that what I said was more literal of what book was talking about. And the gist of it, you kind of get it, the right. importance of water, how much it can affect the tea. Right, right. Yeah, great tea needs great water. Great water elevates, a, a key, can bring out the best of a great tea, mm. but yeah, a bad okay, water can also. squish the best of a great tea. Mm. That would be good if we had an animation of a tea dong with a water foot. <laughs> that's nice. All right, so, okay, that's kind of, uh, kind of I don't want to say I kind of knew that because that was too hard for me, but maybe other people could have got that, but that one was pretty shaky for me. Mm. Para 2 was pretty good. Mm -hmm. I think um, one thing I noticed from my experience with tea mm -hmm. that might not be, that might be lost on a beginner is the, the translation simply says the spring is the best. But I was pretty yeah. sure it's it was the, the mountain season. spring. It's mountain spring and, is the best. And ideally, it's the mountain spring, right? Yeah. The, the, if we're. That's a pretty picky, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we have a saying that to use the local water for the local tea. Mm. So ideally, it's where the tea mm. grows use the mountain spring from that. But who can mountain. get that, right? Mm. <laughs> I mean, huh? I was just thinking we should actually get some water next time and bottle it <laughs> from yeah. the mountain. This is Taiwanian water. It's so funny. Once, it's a little bit precise, but yeah. But once we were talking to a um, uh, a producer who goes to tea exhibition and bring his own water from his mountain, and we we're like, uh, yeah, it's cool. But on the other hand, people don't have that quality of uh, right. water at home. You could taste there and so good and yes. go home and use their own water. It's like, oh, you sold me something. Did you trick me or something? Which right. only they might not think about yeah. it. It's just the water difference. It was a fun, like it's fun to do when you can, but it, you, you also have to be practical, which I love that we're going to get back into that. Mm. So I'm going to dive back over to the paragraph uh, three here. Mm -hmm. Paragraph three. Oh yeah, that was the, uh, hang on, let me finish up para two, make sure I didn't miss anything. Because there's a bunch of stuff. So the, basically the spring, the rest is just about other, so not just Lou, you point out the importance of water, but a bunch of people point out this, the uh, importance of water. Mm. Clean and pure, I, that's pretty clear. Um, and how it, the good water helps it release, which was kind of what that other, the end of para one was saying we need to uh you need good water to really allow the tea to shine mm. but here the this one i i'm a musician so i had to laugh i'm i i do not i don't know what these instruments are i don't know all the chinese instruments but i know some of them but i think basically what they're saying is like a musical instrument tea water is like the player yeah tea is the instrument yeah you a good instrument can produce beautiful sound but not by itself Water yes. is what is going to strum the strings or blow the whistle or whatever to make that. Yeah, sing. yeah, yeah. That's the that's the. But the it, wording is pretty. Uh, I don't know. I feel like those spelling were not very English, so I just skipped them. Yeah, spelling. I think they might be like Gujen and uh, yes, maybe that's what Sihu. It, that's or, it. Uh, that's Sihu. What's the instrument? The the flat one that your mom plays. Guqin. 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 Mm. Or mm. pipa or stuff. I think yeah. that's what they're. 
Anyway, so, fun little part. Fun little part. Yes. Yes. And um, I think that just uh, to I think just to point out a, a few books if some of you guys are interested in those. So classics, a classic of tea mm -hmm. uh, by Lu Yu. Here in this book, uh, it's uh, translated as a book of tea by Lu Yu. So right. uh, that's one. Yeah, it's good because it's uh, not the. I'll highlight it there for them. Yeah. Book of Tea is classic of tea. Yeah, that's more commonly known. Name. I think in the English translation, yeah. Yeah, and uh, some of them know that uh, Song Huizong's uh, book, this one here called uh, Da Guan Tea Disputation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not disputation. Uh, so Dissertation, I dis think they meant, right? Yeah, kind of thing. But uh, um, anyway, so it's called... Uh, Treaty, treaty, treatise on tea. Treatise on tea. Treatise on tea. Treatise on tea. Okay. Right. That's a that's a more English that's translation. The, okay, yeah. And um, cha shu. Yes, cha shu. It's also in a like a, a, a article book about a tea kind of thing mm -hmm. by uh, this person from Ming Dynasty. We don't awesome. need to talk about name, right? That's the reason I asked you this morning. Remember I was talking to you about names oh. and stuff? Just quickly yeah, I don't glance know. over it. Cats out of the bag. They're going to go crazy if we leave them like, like hanging like that. Oh, okay, now. okay. It's uh, uh, because of, like, uh, this is th uh, in this paragraph, it mentions three, uh, three books written by three authors. And uh, Lu Yu is the name. And... Uh, 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 Xu Sushu is also the name, but uh, Emperor Huizong is not the name. How should I say? Like this, em like uh, our way to call Emperor, this is not the name of the uh, Emperor, it's the title of the right. Emperor. So you can see this is Song Huizong. Song means the dynasty. Huizong is the name we gave them after. Uh, uh, yeah, I like, think posthumous name. We might oh, as well just okay, bring okay. it out because there's no real an analog that I know of in, in, in English or in Western culture, but the, basically the emperor has a name for his whole life, like Johnny or mm. Frank. And uh, everybody say, hey, hey, they're pretty nice because he's the emperor. They say, hey, Emperor Frank or just emperor. Then when he dies, he gets a posthumous name that kind of reflect his service, which I didn't, I just read mm. about it literally this morning on Wikipedia. So, and I don't think there's any analog to explain it other than they get renamed. So some some way John, or some, mm, some not way. rename is adding the right, title right, of him right. like his name because in Chinese culture it's kind of a rude more to like call they get people. titled, titled yeah mm, okay. yeah not for ranking but just uh, give some flutters like a great emperor or sometimes ABC. not so great I found out too yeah like his name is actually not so great there's a pretty strict rules of uh, what kind of uh, emperors get what kind of uh, names. Anyway, I just want to mention out, like, it's not like his last name is Song and his mm. name is Huizong. So it's quite different I, yeah, than the other ones. Right. That's all. Cool. All right, I'm going to head back in and we'll go to the next section. Water for modern people to brew. So we've pointed this out a couple times just before I dive into the section. We pointed this out a couple times, but as I was reading it, I really love how this book right. always does something practical or always brings it back to something. You know, it's interesting to see how the ancients regarded the importance of water, but now what do we do? And this mm. is, I love this. Water for modern people to brew. Although it is well known that the spring water is good for brewing tea, it is not easy to get in the modern city. As a result, mineral water and tap water have become the main water to brew tea. It is a good choice to brew tea with mineral water at home. If possible, use ion exchange softener, which can remove the calcium and magnesium ions from the mineral water, and the tea will be better. To deal with the odor of tap water, store it in a tank for one night, and after the chlorine is diffused, use to brew. Then the effect will be quite different. In addition, there is a water bucket of pure water in the market. The pH is moderate. Brewing with this kind of water, the fragrance is much stronger and purer. No odor of or foreign flavor. All right. This, again, practical ways to handle water today in your own house. I love that. And 
Consequently, I really found this easy to understand as well. Mm. Paragraph one, um, it's not easy to get the spring water, especially like you pointed out, off the mountain. Like the, yeah. it was nice that the guy brought it, but what do people do? So uh, mineral water and tap water, um, I don't know, pretty, pretty straight up. It's a good choice to brew tea with the mineral water at home. So I noticed um, Ion Exchanger, I thought this was a big fancy machine. But for those of you following along in the Finnish translation, we did, it's just a filter, I guess. Mm. Uh, there's a fancier filter, it, right. that kind of, but it, the gist of it is uh, using a filter to get mm -hmm. rid of some of those... Uh, the hardness. Uh, the hardness so, of it. Yeah. But, um, you know... Yeah, that's interesting because my mom actually has a well and mm. uh, when I go home to visit her, and she, and she has an, a softener, an ion softener, right? Because right? you fill that's the machine right. you fill with a bag of salt, and it pulls the minerals out of the otherwise really hard water. Right, right. But like they say, well water is the bottom, and it doesn't make good tea, even softened. It's not, it's not the best water. No way. Sorry to report. <laughs> well, I guess it's okay. You guys don't have to suffer, but it, I suffer a little bit when I'm there. But it's okay. My mom's there, so it's all fine. <laughs> So yeah, so the so the filter will remove impurities, but the softener removes calcium and magnesium. Got it. Right, right. And uh, but yeah, anyway, overall, it's pretty straightforward and mm -hmm. understandable. Mm -hmm. Same thing with para three. Uh, if you got a stinky chlorine water in your city, which sometimes happens, sorry to sorry if it's your case. We're kind of lucky; it's not overly stinky. Yeah, um, sometimes it's. Uh... Not like you can smell it, but if you put that for a while, they start to get out. Yeah. Even with our water. Yes, it does have a light one. Right. Because My they use that to kill the bacteria. Yeah, to kill bacteria. Stuff. Yeah. So easy fix, right? Just put it in a, it says here, put it mm. in a tank. But that could be just, you know, uh, like a Brita. Just leave it out for a night. Let it mm. off gas. And um, that's a great solution. So anyway, very understandable paragraph. And we kind of do that. We run it through the Brita and then it sits there and it gets yeah, pretty yeah. decent. Um, love to know what you guys do for your water. Do you use a filter? Do you have mm. one built in under the sink? Use a Brita, maybe only bottled water. I'd love mm. to know the brands you're using too if you do use bottled water because that's a little right. fun. Right, because there are so thing. many uh, different brands yeah. and their uh, compositions are yep, different. very the, different. The mineral contents yeah, are different. Yeah. We've done a little play with that. But in the fourth paragraph, just before we get too into the fun of playing with water, mm -hmm. um, water bucket of pure water didn't jump out at me right away as I think what they mean. Is those are huge ones that you put on the machine upside oh, down with a knob oh, okay. on the... And like distilled, is that what they mean by pure? Because they mm -hmm. go on to talk about pH is moderate which I thought they meant the pH is right down the middle, like pure distilled water, right? Seven, right on the button. But mm -hmm. I don't know what they're talking about here to be. Moderate like. means it's a kind of seven inch or okay. slightly. It depends on that because uh, right. uh, we just call that pure water. Exactly how pure it is or stuff, it still depends uh. on the brand, but uh, it's to, to differentiate that from tap water. A lot okay. of uh, Chinese families have those. Oh. Mm. And okay. um, you can, like the package, this one more say in the package so people know what oh. this book is talking about. I see. It doesn't uh, uh, specify if this. Uh, it's not so much about the or type or of water, yes. it's just you Some, can get the water bottle dispenser kind, and that's pretty fine too. Yes, yes, because mm. you can get distilled water in that form too. Like it depends on what you order, what you call. Maybe what threw me off was down here when they say with this kind of water, the fragrance is much stronger <clears throat> and purer. Mm -hmm. Purer and no foreign odor. So when we do, I'll just share with the, with you guys out there. When we do tea festivals, mm. we brew with the with distilled water because it, there's very little interplay of the water. You're really mm -hmm. getting the tea, sort mm -hmm. of like when you were talking about the guy at the festival using yeah. the mountain water. That's the opposite extreme. Mm -hmm. Now you've got this perfectly matched water. We use a pretty neutral water mm -hmm. so people see the pure tea. That's what threw me off because it really made me feel like our situation. Right. I think the thing uh, with the uh, translation, it has a comparison much stronger. Like it's not really much stronger. It's just to say the a smell would be very rich, aka the water didn't affect much of the aroma. Right. It's right. not a, like a, it would be stronger or something. Right. And right. Uh, no order, no no. 
yeah, um, pleasant flavor. Right. It's just to say this water is pretty neutral and safe to play uh, to Got brew it. tea with. Got it. Okay. Right. Awesome. So let's take it over to the um, let's take it over and see what the comments are. I saw mm. a few flying in here. So um, Jay, I actually drink now. And Johnny, so Johnny, I agree. You need great mm. water to make great tea. I was always osmosis told osmosis water. Osmosis water. What yeah. is that? I think that's a way of purifying water. That's also correct me if I'm wrong, Johnny, but um, I think osmosis filtration leaves the water pretty pure. So maybe almost like almost like distilled water, but I might be wrong. Is that a like filter system or? I think so. I think so. I think it's a way to uh, to get the water really dialed, like really pure. But I, I'm going to let Johnny answer because I'm mm. not, I'm not always sure. I'm not 100% sure. And Josh says, yeah, I've always had trouble with Toronto water. It's delicious, but so hard, it doesn't make the best tea or even coffee. Mm. Rita, absolutely necessary. But I also have a bamboo charcoal to add add minerality. A bamboo charcoal mm. filter. That's pretty fancy. Nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah, we do the same. We run it through the Brita. That seems to work. Mm. And, uh, and Desversified says, we spoil ourselves by using a bottled water dispenser, which is what we were talking about in the last paragraph, right? That's oh. the thing. You pop that on, okay. the, big, the big jug upside down. I think that's right. what, what, what they're referring to. Right. It is the Primo brand that is purified and mineral added. Ah, interesting. So it's not like a mountain stream. They're actually dialing in the mineral content. Yeah, that's a, sometimes a little bit like what is the saying here, the bottle of right, water. It's right. not as pure as like the steel water, but it's uh, and sometimes it put a little bit. Yeah, maybe something. even better, right? If you put get the right mineral content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole thing is like, uh, uh, how should I say? It's more like a, what? I suddenly smile, I thought I said something wrong. No, not uh, at all. It's like a, a test and... I got, a, I got a smile at the camera. I can't oh, okay. can't frown all okay. the time, right? People will leave. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> no, but when I smile, you can tell I'm kind of naughty because when I smile, she gets nervous, which is kind of... A, is that's really, my bad. <laughs> I was going to say with this spring water and those distilled water and sometimes it put some mineral stuff is really like a dye in the right amount of mineral mm. right like um, Josh even have the bamboo like charcoal filter or something mm. to add a little bit of mineral mm. to it it's um we've even know know a few friends who have played with um like remineralizing water with little oh. kits and packets and stuff to try and get just the right water for mm. a given tea that's um that's pretty fancy and fun. Like, no, I totally respect those guys, mm. but it's a little bit too much for me. I kind of just want to get down to brewing and drinking. Mm. Speaking of brewing and drinking, let me come back to the tea table and uh, see if I can show off a bit of, uh, a bit of the liquor yeah, color yeah, here. Yeah, we'll get you a <laughs> fresh so one. That's so cheap liquor color. Oh, yeah. There's a bit of fiber in it. Come back. So, um, oh, and Josh says... Uh, Oh, Joe came back and said that the reverse osmosis is indeed a filter system which does strip the water of everything good and bad, similar oh. to a uh, distilled. Oh, cool. Mm. So, yeah, I think that was, that was That's it. That's very like, powerful distilled system. Yeah, it's supposed to be one of the better ones, supposedly. People who, and Josh says, people who are super into coffee have a novel approach. They buy distilled water and buy packets from a company called Third Wave Water to add back precise minerals. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that's what these guys, these folks were using with tea though. They were like kind of right, hijacking right, the, right. hijacking the third wave coffee water prep system and uh, making their own recipes. Some people even mix their own minerals from scratch by buying large bags from Amazon. Whoa. Chemist. Chemist. Whoa. All right. We're going to head down here and share with you uh, the liquor color here. So you can see the Autumn Tae Guan Yin. It's got that beautiful... Looks like it's a little more orange on the uh, on your side, but it's got a gorgeous golden tone here in front of me. Mm. Um, just oh, really floral, lovely floral with that warm autumn roasty. This is really creamy. Mm -hmm. This is smell this. It's, this is like um, I don't want to say it's mm. it's not osmanthus, but it reminds me of that booming aroma of like 
the similar when you go outside and have a, an aroma that's filling the air, you know? But with that creamy floral. Mm, delightful. Mm. I'm gonna. I realize the list now. How like creamy it is. It's so. Um, mm. Yeah. So comforting. That's why I chose Autumn Taeguanyin and why Autumn teas are so awesome. They have that exact comforting property yeah, that yeah. you kind of need to ward off the, uh, I don't want to say despair, but I can't think of a better word, the despair of winter. <laughs> it's scary to see those beautiful red leaves. Yeah, it is very beautiful, but it is scary. It's totally funny. This is totally off topic, but there's actually news. In the news, we're hearing about... Uh, Snowbird. So for those of you down oh. south who don't know what a snowbird is, it is not a bird, it is not an avian, it is a, it is a Canadian person who flees to the United States for the winter. So there's actually yeah, yeah, an I interview with a, with a couple, an old couple, who haven't been in a Canadian winter for almost 30 years and they're terrified that they're, <laughs> that they're gonna have to overwinter here but they, they don't know what else to do. So. I don't know. I think if I was them, I might just go for it. Just, just go. I don't know. <laughs> all right, back to the book, guys. I'm off topic a bit. We've, I see all your comments coming in. We're going to come back to them. I'm just going just gonna to do some reading, and then we're going to come right back to those, all right? Are we going to do this part? Oh, oh okay, yeah. I'm going to have to do that live. I totally missed that. Let's do it. All right, so there's a little side note here, which I usually review, usually but... Usually you force me to do it. Yep, yep, this that's okay. Here reverse. we go. Why the spring water is the best. Oh, this is awesome. That is because spring water is the result of running through many sandstone layers and being permeated, the equivalent of multiple filtering. The water has no impurities. Water quality is soft, clean, and contains a variety of inorganic substances. Brew in this kind of water. The tea soup is bright and adequately shows the color, aroma, and taste. Hmm. You know what? I give that one a big check mark. <laughs> that one is pretty clear. And, and we did spend a, a while talking about it already. So if we're okay, I'll, um, I'll go to the one. next section. Yeah. yeah, cool. You are the one who say if the translation is okay or not. Yeah, it's good. So you give it a it's check good. Or? What do you guys think? Let me know if you thought that was okay. I thought that was butter, which means like, you know, smooth and good. <laughs> Boiling water scientifically makes tea better. All right. Requirements for the temperature of water. Different kinds of tea require different temperature. High temperature, 95 degrees C to 100 degrees C. For those of you down south, 203 to 212 F. It is mainly used to brew oolong tea with opening surface such as Baozhong, Dongding, Iron Mercy Goddess, Narcissus, Wu Yi Rock Tea, etc. and the later Zymotic Pu'er. <whistles> Both tea are picked while being tender. The temperature of water should be lower while the grown ones need higher temperature. The above oolong tea is baked in strong fire, so does the temperature of water. On, contra on the contrary, low temperature. Mm. Medium temperature. 85 degrees C to 90 C, or 185 to 194. It is used to brew Baihao Oolong tea, which is picked at young level, green tea or dried white tea, and black tea, which are withering. Low temperature, 80 to 85, or 176 to 194 F. It is used to brew Dragon Well, Green Spiral, or the green and yellow tea, which are with tender buds. All right, let's go back to the top of the section. Title, good, obviously, d different kinds of tea require different temperature. This is all like really basic and good. Um, <laughs> but it gets a little bit funky uh, into this paragraph, mm. okay? Um, I think, so again, I gotta remember, I, I try to read this, guys, as a... As okay, a big, open service, yeah, so as they a, have a little... Yeah, they do have that. Down. So let's check out opening surface, see if that helps, because I had a lot of trouble with that. The fresh leaves with tender top has been grown up and has come out buds. Nope, didn't help. I mean, 
I'm imagining I'm a new person to tea, right? Right. I'm, I'm like still not sure what this whole opening surface thing is. That was a little bit, I think that could be hard for people. And even I'm only guessing with my, with my knowledge of tea, I'm guessing what that means. So that's uh, because it's a tea term. Mm. It's a strict tea term. Uh -huh. and, uh, Just for those who haven't seen some other episodes, the, the translator, yeah. So even if you speak Chinese, there's just like any technical field, computing or banking or whatever, yes. they have their whole own language and T terms are no different. So if you yes. don't know exactly what the term means and you translate it literally, it's probably, it is going to sound wrong and or funny. Mm. So open, uh, opening surface. How should I say that? Do you call that opening surface? It means oh, the no. leaves are fully open. They're not buds anymore. Oh, oh, yeah. So it means a, a leaf, mm. not a not a slight, not a partially opened leaf. So, yeah, so again, a T means, term, right? So we yeah. should explain when it. When you talk to mm. somebody, talk about this uh, open leaf, mm. open surface leaf, it means it has the bud phase is mm -hmm. to a mature side. And uh, with the paragraph, you can guess a little bit maybe because of the examples uh, uh, given here are right. all those oolong teas that require more uh, mature leaf than bud. Right. And that's what helped me out. I was like, mm -hmm. but I did. And that's a oolong plucking standard. Yes. Yes. Right. Which we covered way back in the early episodes when mm -hmm. we did the uh, plucks. Yeah. And then you have this and the later zymotic puar. So that just means puar. Yeah, post fermented it, shu puar, yeah. post fermented puar. So I, but I had no idea what zymotic meant, and, and it's probably an actual word. I just didn't know it. I would, I would go more with sounds post fermented. Sounds really badass. Right? Sounds like a, it sounds like a bad guy in a mo in an action movie. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry. It really does. Zymotic, right? Come on. Give me, give me some. Spit. <laughs> so both T are picked, and then what else? So let me check here. Opening surface we covered. Oh, and then should be lower. Um, so temperature, uh, so blah, blah, all of those kinds of tea that, that if they're still tender, so they're open leaf, but not, you know, pretty tender still, which is, I, I think, what you want. Yes. The temperature of the water should be lower. But I think, they, I think that's I, kind of meaning to the lower side of the range. Like maybe not at the 100, but more like the 95, maybe a little lower, maybe a little depends. higher. Depends. Again, this is a... a uh, introduction book right so they have to give pretty clear simplified uh, guidance to people right but this is the section you see a little hint of intuitive brewing brewing uh -huh. tea is not those are teas we use 95 to 100 mm. you gotta observe the leaves and decide right so here it says if it's a plug to the tender side use a lower water temperature got it if it's a uh, leaves are mature side use the higher temperature. Yes, okay. And uh, of, uh, as, uh, besides, you got to observe the bay, the roasting. Right, you know? right, which is the next part, right? Yes. And so if they're roasted with... Um... And it didn't give you to say how low is it because it depends on the tender. This one, I think that this is a... Uh, this two sentences basically is give you the notion of sometimes you got to adjust it. It's not to say high is 100, low is 95. It's right. not very uh, mathematical like that. Right, right. Yeah, just to give you a little hint and not a very... Right. So, and we always advocate that, right? So you got to play with it. Don't be shy. Uh, if you got yourself a good tea, um, it's not going to wreck it. It might just be a bit strong. Have some fun with it. Um, and try, it's really good to try and break away from the thermometer anyway. How do you get to 95? How do you get to these temperatures? You boil your water and you just wait a bit. You chill out, have, some, have a relax. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, so like the, so down here we had a similar, I had some similar struggles. Oolong tea is baked in strong fire. It, I had to read this a few times. Oolong tea is baked in strong fire. So does the temperature of the water. I think they're saying strong fire, higher temperature. Yeah. On the contrary, lighter roast, low temperature. But I read yes. like literally five times to, because you have to really put the commas in and it's not quite right. Okay. So, but that's the gist, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Strong, big, big, strong fire. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
And the way, I guess, for the beginner tea person who might not even know how do they know is the、um, color of the dry leaves.、Mm, yes. Yeah,、oh, that's a good point to say. Just、uh, for oolong teas, if you are not sure, if they look pretty green. Mm -hmm. Those are lighter roasted. Yeah.、Uh, if they look dark, they have more like almost to the brown side. Yeah. Or even dark. Those are more、uh, higher heavier, fire, heavier, heavier roast. Heavier roasted. Yeah. yeah. And、uh, don't forget to have a look at your tea. Don't be shy. Like look、mm -hmm. at it as it opens. You might not notice the green on the dry leaf, but it may start to pop as the leaf unrolls. I've noticed sometimes they look darker when they're tight and dry,、mm -hmm. and then you see the green sort of emerge, and you might say, "Oh, I want to back off a little bit," yeah. or yeah. whatever.、Absolutely. Like totally play with your tea. Get your fingers in there. Feel it. You'll feel the tenderness of the leaf.、Mm. You know, don't be shy.、Um, medium temperature. All right. This part was、um, the the only thing here was so use it to brew、uh, these more gr again more green right we've、mm -hmm. gone to buy how which we just talked about、mm -hmm. this was pretty fine ex I found except black tea which is withering so the way that's written means it's actually withering right there in front of the person brewing it but I think、oh. they mean withered black tea or <clears throat> black tea that's undergone a wither a harder wither、mm -hmm. I wasn't sure、mm -hmm. what that meant. That means those teas that went through the withering process. Okay. Okay. So at the front end, and yes, then I、yes. had the similar question: is like, if I'm kind of new, how the heck do I know? You don't need to know if it's white tea or、uh, black tea. They don't both both have that process. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So it's kind of, it could just say green tea or dried white tea and black tea, right?、Mm. They both have that. Yes. Uh, that's a oh, they're saying why do you have that lower, which has withering, not yes, only those ones that are yes, okay, okay, that's not a, clear at all. Yeah, I see, I see. So hopefully that's clear. So、yeah. basically, it means green tea, or white tea and black tea because they're withered. Oh,、okay. more a, a little expansion here、mm -hmm. because、uh, in the English translation lost a lot. Sure. So they, they there are four categories that were mentioned here, right?、Mm -hmm. What you just mentioned at the end of this paragraph it says the withered white tea and black tea, which both categories, both type of tea go through withering. Right. Then before that, they mentioned two types of tea: oolong and green.、Mm -hmm. So what kind of oolong is uh, uh, plucked young? For example, bai hao oolong. You know, bai hao oolong are little. Right. So the How do you know the good the grade of bai hao oolong by looking at the leaves? Is you want to see mini mini buds and leaves and stuff? Okay. So initially,、uh, this is not a、uh, not very emphasized in nowadays market when people talk about bai hao oolong. Is what happened after those buds? I feel like this is a bonus. <laughs> right, <laughs> guys. This is a bonus. So like, if you're a little bit distracted. Tune in right now. You're going to get some cool stuff here. Okay, big screen, go. <laughs> I'm pretty excited right now. Suddenly, I feel so special. So.、Uh, oh, that's perfect. <laughs>、uh, so, by how long? When、uh, we know it's a bug bitten and stuff, and、uh, because the bug、uh, bites the leaves, and it have a special.、Um, Chemicals and stuff that give that unique flavor.、Mm -hmm. First, a lot of one on the market, almost a, a lot of tea got bitten. It's a what you like that a fruitiness that、mm -hmm. also a champagne color. Those all come from the process. And there's a tons of bai hao oolong that was generated in mainland China and stuff.、Mm -hmm. So what actually happened is when they bite in the right time in the summer or something when they. Get bitten, the plant kind of gets in shock、right. and、uh, grows really slowly. Ah,、uh. you know they they just、uh, stop growing.、Mm -hmm. And what you see is a little buds with a little leaves, and、um, but they're leathery because they're still quote unquote growing. So rather than grow in size, they grow in fibrous kind of thing. Okay. So that you、Whoa. will see their tenderness,、uh, so called tenderness, is not. Uh, to say, oh, those are buds. Those are tenderness. Those are old buds, like really fibrous, leathery kind of a buds. Wow. And le leathery little leaves. The really top grade, really high end,、uh, by how oolongs are very mini. 
the pieces, okay. little okay. buds, little leaves, everything. That's the um, the authentic. That's part. sort of a, an indicator. Wow, that yeah. is awesome. Thank you. Shared secret, guys. You saw it here first. Okay, so back. Not that yet, because I've missed another oh. category. Green tea. The green oh, tea sorry. is listed. Sorry, back you. to the book. But that was just so exciting. Right, back to the book. The green tea is listed as not any green tea. It's like a gua pian, right? You mentioned that. Uh, oh, it doesn't say that at all here. So gua pian, like a luan gua pian, this kind. So mm, mature leaf green that's tea. That's right. Mm. Like older to the older side of a green tea, you might consider in this. Yeah. Temperature. By old, by old, I just want to clarify. Oh, right. She mean the the material is not very super young and tender, mm -hmm. which is a lot of green tea do emphasize on the young, tender springtime material. Right. But gua pian is uh, made with uh, uh, mature leaf, mm. and if it's made with more mature material, you want to be in this yeah. medium zone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And there's also the the little footnote for the black withering, which we should have a quick look at. Mm -hmm. Through, through being in the sunshine or rise temperature, to make the fresh leaves lose water. Okay, so they just define withering, um, but still, Water. it's. I think the clarification we did was really important. It's not some of these teas are withered; they're all withered, and it's just that's mm -hmm. why they're here. Okay, and then um, did that cover all four? The the yellow is the same as the green, I think. Yeah. Okay. Those are those tender ones. They, yeah. uh, you know, for example, Longjing or Bilochun. Yeah, and that was pretty understandable. Yeah, mm -hmm. dragon well, green spiral, so bilo chun, mm -hmm. and um, yellow tea tender. Okay, and I don't think so. I think I need to read. I didn't read factors yet. So you let's want to go through some comments. I see. Yeah, let's have a comment break. Good call. Good call. Mm. All right. So, um, holy cow. Recipe. Okay, some people even mix uh, Amazon. Right. Right. Okay. Next. But my goodness, it's a lot of effort. That's right. That's fine. <laughs> that's okay. What I was thinking. Thanks for saying it, Josh, because that's why we dropped out too. We're just like, it's water, right? It's, uh, oh boy. It actually helps her diminish returns. Yeah, yeah, there are diminishing returns, I think. And again, unless you have a stunning tea and you need a really great water to make it shine. But um, John, I don't know. I feel like because uh, we try some, uh, you know, like a. Uh, supermarket like a supermarket they have different brands we mm. always try if anything comes out of I kind of have my favorite brands that I, I know this mm. water is reliable if I have a really uh, rare tea that I'm gonna brew with I would go with what I know oh yeah oh yeah yeah you're not right. gonna start experimenting at that right, point that's right. true too and that's uh, true and the, the thing is if you have a lot of a great tea like uh, those rare tea you can experiment with it's great because you have no when we have no baseline when we have brewed that mm -hmm. once we might think we need to do more adjustment to the water mm -hmm. so i just feel like it's a lot of effort for right. really n tiny things and not guaranteed a good return when you have a rare tea right right we um anyway in the end i'm just lazy yeah and we play with water we played with that um, spring water too we have a local mm -hmm. spring and we found pretty good for puar but we avoid that for oolong. It's just too... Sometimes I dilute it, so it's less mineral. Right. So, yeah, we play with it. Yeah. Um, but an easy way, right? Yeah, yeah, easy way. Nothing too Eyeballing fancy. it. Intuitive brewing, right? We're like, oh, that was too minerally. Let's dilute it down a bit. And so then what Josh... Yeah, a lot of effort. Johnny says, osmosis water is, way, is, a, is a way to purify water through evaporation and condensation. Mm. Think of oh. smart water. Mm. I thought of like water that can do math when I thought of smart water. I don't think that's what he meant though. Sorry, Joe. Sorry, Johnny. Joe, really? reverse osmosis is great, but if it's the only water you'll drink, it will legitimately strip your body of minerals and dangerously throw off your electrolyte balance. Oh yeah. Oh. But you gotta like if I think if you, as long as you're eating good lots of food, you should be all right and not drinking like too much. Anyway, stay safe, people. And well, if you brew tea, that should be totally fine. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. It might help. Yeah. And diversified says perfecto. Awesome. Perfecto. All right, swinging back. Moving right along. Okay, okay, just oh, one more oh, thing. Oh, no problem, no I problem. Just, uh, I just want to uh, mention something, because here we say temperature, right? 
and uh, as if you have been following us and you know how much we advocate for uh, mm. brew with boiling water uh, does this book contradict to what we say uh, no mm. first is um, the book is for uh, more like uh, beginners mm. which means it's a mass audience and uh, the mass the majority of tea. If you look at the market, even North American, the majority of tea is tea bag, mm -hmm. right? So you gotta kind of cater that, and by lowering right. temperature, everything is good. And second is when I say brewing tea with boiling water, I found sometimes uh, uh, there are people who misunderstand in two aspects. Mm. One is they think I said every tea should be brewed with boiling water. That's not what I, what I meant is with great teas, they can stand boiling water. Mm -hmm. It's not every tea should brew with boiling right, water. Right. And all our uh, videos and stuff, we use our own teas. That's why I use boiling water. Right, right. And uh, second is for people who want to experiment with the boiling water to brew tea, um, they would uh, brew I mean, every other measurement, they uh, keep status quo, except changing, say, 80 degree water to 100 degree, because I said that's how you brew Gong Fu tea. But uh, sometimes they still leave the tea uh, in the same vessel for three right. minutes, while I usually do like a 30 seconds infusion. Mm -hmm. Like what I mean is if you change one parameter of the uh, brewing um, of your map. brewing setup yes mm. uh, you kind of have to rethink uh, does the rest match it right. right right if I'm lowering water temperature I also got to adjust the uh, brewing time or the the volume and the quantity uh, ratio and stuff like that so yeah just yeah. want to quickly mention this like uh, yeah and it might sound like a lot but it's really you kind of get into a vibe with it like a, well, you know, there's people who do so much for yeah, water, yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, they're making their own water. It's not as hard. It's, it's not as it's hard, not as, hard. it's kind of natural, yeah. All right, great. Mm. Heading back. Bam. All right, so factors affecting temperature. The temperature is affected by the following factors. Warming the pot or not. Whether warm the teapot before putting the tea into the cup will affect the temperature will affect the temperature pour hot water into the unwarmed cup the temperature will be will reduce by five degrees as a result without warming the pot the temperature must be higher or time extended fully wet or not when brewing tea the process the process of the first water injection into the pot then drained off is called warming and soaking which is intended to make rolling tea, rolling tea off a little and stretch to facilitate, ayo, to facilitate the first tea soup show its color, smell, and taste. The tea absorbs the heat and temperature brewing again. The speed of releasing soluble material will be accelerated, so the implementation of warming and soaking should be shortened the time. Cold storage or not. The tea that have been refrigerated or frozen must be taken out and being back to the normal temperature. Then it can be brewed. Okay. Warming the pot or not. Okay, so temperature is affected by the following factors. So warming the pot or not. Mm -hmm. Whoops, I'm a little bit crazy on the book there, guys. Sorry. Um, I think this was pretty clear. Um, hot, you know, if you don't warm up your pot, you're going to lose some temperature when the water hits the cold ceramic or the cold yeasting or whatever you're brewing in. So um, adjust your input temperature, you know, with the water going in. If, if the tea wants to be brewed in 95, put it in 100 because as soon as the water hits the vessel, it's going to lose 5 degrees. I think that was pretty clear. And if you guys think anything isn't clear, by all means, shoot up a question and say, hey, that wasn't clear. Hey, that wasn't clear. Really? No. Oh. There's one test if it worked. It worked, it worked, okay. So <laughs> fully fully wet or not. Um, the only thing here is if you're, if you're really brand new, like this is rinse, okay? It's not warming and soaking. 
Um, they're talking about the rinse. So if you fully wet means rinsed or not rinsed. How does that affect how we brew the tea? Mm. And again, like, like Jen said, right, this is really trying to push you to kind of pay attention to some of the details and adjust your parameters based on what's going on at the time. Because mm -hmm. um, sometimes you don't want to rinse and you don't need to rinse a tea, but sometimes you might prefer to. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, uh, no problems here. Uh, basically, uh, if the leaf is wet, it's going to release more on the first infusion, so uh, won't need as hot water. And then cold storage. So basically, this is also pretty great. It's just saying don't brew cold tea. Uh, I think we can all agree that makes sense, right? We're going to smash it with hot water. But to be honest, from what we just learned, I could cheat a little bit and just you know, steep it a bit longer or brew it a bit, but yes, know, better it not. It could. No, yeah. uh, the, just before I go to the content, just to quickly mention, uh, echo to what you just said about uh, adjusting it, right? So the mm -hmm. reason not doing the cold is because of that drops of water temperature quick. Right. And uh, there's always a way to, like in almost a uh, when we talk about brewing, we have uh, several parameters and mm -hmm. we always suggest it to each other. Mm -hmm. But there is something called the best way to brew this right. because there's right. a limit. A while yeah. ago, we did uh, uh, a brewing context between you and me, right? You mm. choose the vessel, I choose the vessel and stuff like that. Right, right. And I choose that the wrong fun. vessel with a lot of tea and I try to shorten my... He won't. He won't. I want right because and like you said, there's limits to there how much you can limit. push. Right. Yes. Like uh, say, uh, oh, um, I didn't. I put too much tea leaves. A uh, if the vessel is big enough, you can be quick enough to your speed limit. But if you're in, right, not in What? Who is the lightning guy? The flash. Flash. Yeah. If you can be like flash, then you have no limit. Otherwise, what? We all have the limit of... Pool. You really want to know what? what? Because gravity, the water can only come out so fast. It's also pushing your... Lim Even the flash has a limit. The, the water will be on the tea oh. based on the slit on the guy one. Like their teapot okay, spout. Okay, you're right. Like, right. Not engaging the nerd talk too much. <laughs> so all I'm saying is our hand speed, speed to put stuff away and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There is a limit to how fast it yes. can actually yes. pour out if the leaf is way too much it's still gonna get a really yeah. strong tea. and that applies to you know time too right time, yeah. if your temperature is so low and your time so long cold brew you know eventually certain elements of the tea just can't get out there's not enough temperature right or if you do the hot brew and uh, uh, for example uh, say rock tea we do boiling water, brew instant to come out for several infusion where you said, I, oh, I want to do like a 60, 70 degrees and mm. uh, do three minute infusion. You can end up having a lot of uh, astringency and mm. bitterness that right, comes out right. while the, some other desired elements that doesn't really come mm. out. So there is something yeah. we have to balance when brewing the tea. Right. That's right. Just keep it all... Keep it all real. Yes. And talking about the rings, why it's hard to uh, translate is because it's again tea turn. Ah. It's called a wen run pao. Mm. Wen means uh, warming up and stuff. But soaking is a really bad to translate. Run means uh, moisturizing, mm. like nourishing. It's a very beautiful word. Wen run pao is a very uh, elegant right. name for rinse. rinse. It yeah. Sounds way better. Than if you're rinse. if you're interested in the um, in those like pinion terms, that's also in the finished translation. For those of yes. you who might be following along, mm -hmm. we like to the keep. The link is in. Uh, yeah, it's in the description down below, and we like to keep some of those sometimes because they're just sometimes fun, and they do capture some of the poetry mm -hmm. and beauty of of the tea. And those are great show off words. Come mm. on. <laughs> yeah, yes. No, you don't think? No, like, I, I'm sure. See it, I'm sure they agree. Know, like a tea term and stuff yeah. like that. Um, so I just want to yeah. show them. Maybe I can even show them Wen Ren Pao. I don't know if, if they care, but that would be uh, here. Yeah. yeah, just the top three character. The first three? Uh, yes. There you go. Yeah, Wen Ren Pao. That's awesome. the name for rings in Chinese. Nice. All right, shall we take it out to the comments and see what's going on? Mm -hmm. Okay, no more comments. Cool. <laughs> awesome. So that covers water. 
Mm -hmm. That covers, and if you remember, um, I'm going to head back to the book, just back to the table of contents. If you remember from the table of contents, that's going to mean that next week we are heading into um, a new section. And hmm, yeah, we're talking about specific teas. This is going to be interesting. Because mm, I, I think this one we're going to pick and choose carefully, right? What does that mean? Our, I don't know if we're going to go through all of these. I think these are really detailed how to bruise. No, no. Oh. Uh, all right, let's, actually... let's spill it then. What's going on? This is, I think it's very interesting. Oh, it it's going to be awesome. So what it happens is like you can see there's a, 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 yeah, eight, a bunch of teas. For example, eight green teas, right? Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a highlight green tea like a dragon well. And oh. uh, so in these sessions, we talk about a little bit more background, a little bit of the name, uh, even the oh. plucking a little bit with the brewing. Well, oh, those that... less known teas would be much quicker just rough rough introduction so it, there is a balance it's not a fully like uh, oh nice though really but, bad. so that's going to be a great section to and dive into about, uh, green tea like process a little bit mm -hmm. and stuff it's... oh no super interesting okay mm -hmm. i i thought it was more like how to brew but this is going to be a very awesome section coming up next week mm -hmm. we'll be diving into uh some really cool details about process specifics about individual teas that you guys know and love mm -hmm. so definitely tune in next week for that and i'm next i'm going to be like is the general talking about green tea yeah i'm going to be jumping started. out of my seat again next sunday to get yeah. started on this it'll be really Super. fun and yeah and if you um so today we talk about water just want to mention that if you're interested in this topic we made a video about water a while ago we will put uh, mm. the link down below Eagle. sorry Tea spill. And uh, also uh, rings. We also have a. <laughs> it's okay. We also have a video uh, talking about rings, what it is, how to do it, uh, why do you want to do it, and stuff like that mm -hmm. to explain a little bit more. Because that was a little, just a little. No, I love that. And I, there was one more video. I'm not sure if it's in one of the videos you mentioned or not, but I remember you once showed how to brew. You, when you can't get any good tea, you how to brew a tea bag with your secret formula, which was all about the stuff we've been talking about, about intuitive brewing and how to play with the parameters and how to I drink tea bag. how to oh. caress the limit. Yeah, it's not often, but sometimes you're just stuck somewhere and you just want some tea. So you're like, you go to a Starbucks or a place, hey, give me you try a... Try your best to brew and yeah, bring the best of Give me an Earl Grey or whatever and, and you do it your best. It doesn't just apply to loose leaf tea or anything. Yeah, any tea. even if you don't want to try her technique, it's still interesting to see how she applied the technique because it's all intuitive brewing just to get the best out of the tea, which is really what brewing is all about. When we're brewing tea for ourselves or our friend, it's just about taking the leaf we have in front of us and getting that best flavor out of it. All yeah. right. Right. So guys, that is uh, Josh. Josh is super excited for next week. So am I. Same with the... Uh, Versified. I... Looking forward to that. Yeah. Awesome. We're looking forward to seeing you guys. Yes. That wraps it up. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you guys can click the thumbs up, it really helps our channel grow. We've got, uh, we'll put a, the link to the Autumn Taeguan Yin down below too. You can spoil yourself, grab some great tea um, and enjoy it with us. You can even look ahead. We've got our tea picked out for next week. Yeah. And the week after, and the week after, and I don't remember what any of them are. <laughs> but you can either. check on them and um, and um, brew along with us if you wish, or brew. Get some uh, at least some green tea ready for next. Uh, yeah, next one. I don't. Yeah. I didn't Do know for sure. Tea, I doubt it because I didn't know for sure. And right. in the autumn, I tend to start and push more to the dark right, and the right, oolong. Right. But I may change it. Anyways, up to you. <laughs> All right. So guys, until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.